sea moss and vegetables. What a combination. Let's make a raw vegan quiche today. Hi everyone and welcome. Here is your quiche for today. I am so happy that you are with us today. This is the sea moss that we'll be using today and these vegetables and fruits as well. So let's have a look first at the sea moss, shall we? We get it from the sea dried like this and then we have to make a gel with it. So I made the gel beforehand and this is what it ends up looking like. I'm just going to open this up for you. And this is what it ends up looking like. And Belinda, if you are around and you're watching this, here is yours sending you the sample. So this is the CMOS gel that we're using. This particular one, is of course well crafted and it's raw and it's from St. Lucia. You've got to be very careful where you get it from and make sure that it's not farmed, that it's directly from the sea. So I'm going to be putting up some information on the screen and I see their comments already. Yeah, interesting type recipe you did. Yes, yes. Hi, do Hi, Tom. Lovely to see you here as well. So I'm going to be putting up some information on CMOS on the screen right now. So as I go ahead and make this, you can have that to play with. Now, it starts out being quite, shall I say, uh, soft. But then when you put it in the fridge, it does become a gel. So you can see here, it's quite a gel here. Today, we're going to be using that. We're going to be using these gorgeous Carrots, aren't these stunning? I love the fact that they're in season now. I only do things that are seasonal. So that is why we're using the ingredients we're having today. We're also gonna be using some raw, truly raw. It's very hard to find truly raw cashews. These are truly raw cashews. We're going to be using some finger lemons, finger limes, finger limes. For those of you who don't know it, we'll be talking about this a lot during the winter months. And here we have some herbs. And I will go into that in a moment. And we're going to be using as well an avocado. So let's start. Go right into it. And here's what we have on the table for you. Today we're not using a blend or a juice. I already juiced. What I juiced already was the celery juice. So we already have that all ready to go. I was actually going to do two recipes today, one sweet, one savory, but I didn't end up having, we don't have enough time on this show. So here we go. This is the what we're using today. Let me actually make sure you can see what goes on in this food processor. I'm using a mini food processor, not the big one, because I just don't need the big one today. Okay. So I'm going to start off with a carrot and I'm going to... Shred this ca these carrots. I'm going to do three of them. Just starting off by shredding them. There we go. Very quick, very easy. This is why I'm using the mini food processor today rather than the big one because I really don't need to do a lot in there. So we've got the carrots all done. Let me just open this up and take this out. I hope you can see this. I don't know if you can see well. And move this away from here. Put this away. And I'm going to take out the carrots. Let me put this in a container. 
So let's get the carrot, the shredded carrots out of there. You can see that that's shredded already. And yes, this is a very interesting recipe. This is my version of a raw quiche. Very different. And what really makes it a quiche is actually the sea moss. So make sure when you're doing the sea moss, I'm going to put some more information about sea moss on the screen for you right now. That you get it from a reliable source. Please, please, please. This is really important. And you'll see some people say, oh, don't use sea moss. It can be very toxic. No, it depends on the source you get it. And also make sure it's not processed, that it's raw and wild crafted. Please, please. It's the caracogene in the in the processed one that is so toxic but not in the raw wild crafted one because that comes directly from the sea and not from some pool or farm where people are making it a lot now just to make money off of it so there we go so i'm you i'm leaving a little bit of it in here because i do want the taste and the the flavor of the carrots in here so what do we have here now i've got three different herbs here so this one, this one is dill. Then I've got some cilantro. Not too much. Be careful. We never use too much cilantro. You don't want to detoxify your liver. It's a strong detoxer of the liver. Everything I do is healing and will help detox. This is parsley. Love parsley. If you don't like parsley a lot, don't put too much in there. I love parsley, so I'm putting a lot in there. And I'm putting all of this i know it, it looks weird but i'm putting most of it i should say because i want some at the end afterwards now the next thing i'm going to be using is a lemon and so i'm going to be taking the lemon putting it on here i hope you can see this let me move this and i'm just going to make sure that it squeezes really easily just put your hands especially this part on it and press it down and you'll get more juice out of it that way. Taking a ceramic knife, and I'm now going to cut open. Oh, what a juicy, be look at the architecture of this food. Isn't nature stunning? Look at that juicy moist, and look at all the sacred geometry in there. This is the kind of food that we really need to be eating a lot of. It, it's quite remarkable. So, before we start, and I, I actually ought to have put this in before, I forgot to put this in. So what's great about this mini processor is that if I forget something, I can still add it. So I have to put this in first at the very bottom. And once I put this in, then we are going to be putting in the lemon. And then after the lemon, there it is. Okay, and then after the lemon, I'm going to be putting in the cashews. Now, what I did was I soaked the cashews beforehand for a little bit more than four hours. Cashews don't need to be soaked a lot because they're really not a nut. Um, all nuts need to be soaked eight to 12 hours minimum, but not cashews because they're not a nut. But I did soak them. So first the lemon and to make sure that I don't put the seeds and the lemon in there, I put a strainer on first so that when I squeeze it in there, look at how many seeds. So it's great to have the seeds. It means it's a really delicious, juicy and healing lemon. We need lemons. Now, for those of you who've heard me give talks and presentation, I keep saying we need more alkaline foods or food is too acidic. And you might be saying, why are you using lemons? Because yes, they are acidic outside of the body. But inside the body, they're not. They're actually alkaline. Isn't that fantastic? And I'll be looking at the comments soon. But this is the beauty about lemons. So make sure you grow your own lemon trees if you possibly can, because they're just such a healing, incredibly healing fruit. So, okay, you can, however many lemons you put is up to you. You can actually put more if you want to. You could even have put two lemons in there i am not because that's as much as i want in there then next are the cashews which have been soaked and if you don't want to put cashews you do not have to i want to make this really smooth you know i want to make it yes like a, a quiche with a few things in there 
but I want to make it smooth, which is why I'm also now going to cut open this avocado. Never cut an avocado or an apple with another knife, except for a ceramic knife. This does not change the energy of the food, so it will not change the color. You, it will not corrode it, and you won't see any brown marks there. I knew this was going to be a perfect avocado because the avocado farmer from whom I get it, I have never gotten avocado from him that was not perfect. So I'm going to scoop this out. Actually, I'm going to show you a fun way of getting the seed out. Just press from the back here. Just push the back and it comes up just like that. So let's put this in here. And now I'm going to get the avocado out of here in here. Now, if you have a very ripe avocado, it's even better. Like, you know, when they're over too ripe and you say, oh, this is not really the way I wanted it. That's a, the time to make it into a quiche. The riper it is, uh, well, it's a fruit anyway. So you want to make sure you always eat fruits when they're ripe. But if you got one that you think is overripe, make it into the quiche. The, the riper it is, the, the more authentically quiche tasting and quiche looking it will be. So now, do you have to put an avocado in there? No, but I strongly recommend it. I have to wipe my hands first. So I'm wiping my hands with this. Somebody had asked me, what it is that you're wiping your hands with since you say you don't use paper towels? This looks like a paper towel, but it is not a paper towel. This looks like a paper towel, but it's not a paper towel. So this is what I'm using. See, this is from bamboo. And this actually, you can, you can wash it. You can actually wash this and use it up to 40 times. So that is when you see me using paper towels. This is what I'm using because I was criticized by someone who's using paper towels. And I said, no, I do not use paper, tree paper towels. These are from bamboo. So the last thing that we're going to be looking at are these scallions going to be using these scallions so i'm going to show you first so i watched the whole thing we're going to be actually putting in here the lower part this part i don't know if you can see that yeah this part the part the leaves we're going to leave that for afterwards and we put that in afterwards so I'm going to put this over here because it's in my way. Now, why did I juice this celery beforehand? Actually, these celeries, I should say. Because you're going to need something moist in here. I don't believe in putting water in things. I don't like using the water from the tap, even though I do have a filter. I believe in using structured water for everything in the food because that's the water the body needs. And every time I make food, it's always for healing. So for me, that's really, really important. So I'm putting this in there now. I'm just going to cut it in two and then put it in. And what else are we putting in there? Well, I like a lot of herbs and fresh herbs. So I got some fresh herbs and I washed them and then I took it off the stalk and this is the oregano or some people call it oregano and this are, is just one little piece of tomato that's for flavor that I'm putting it in there. I use that a lot for flavor. And then here I have some dried ones that I've put together. This has sumac in it. It has some thyme and it has a bit of rosemary but not too much because you know the French use these things very very they use them a lot, but but very small amounts of the time. And this is the coconut aminos. You can get this organic coconut aminos to use. And that's what I'm putting in here. You don't have to put this unless you wish to have it in there. And only if you wish to, if you want, you can use this Celtic seaweed seasoning. Now, be careful putting seaweed in there because, you know, you don't want a quiche to taste too seaweedy because then it will taste too Japanesey. And what, what we're doing here is a French recipe. But for those of you who want salt, then I would recommend this in there. So that's most of what we're doing with this. I have some other things we're going to do afterwards. Putting this back on here. 
putting this back on. But what have we not put in there yet? The most important part, which is the moss. But I'm going to put this in after I have mixed this. So I have to put some liquid in there. Therefore, this is why I have this, which is the celery juice. Just put a little bit in there, too, not too much, because I don't want it to come out too liquidy, although it doesn't matter because of the seaweed, because of the sea moss. Okay, I need to mix it. I'm going to use a spatula and just move it away from there. There we go. Let's see how this does now. Chopping it. So while I do this, I have to, let me move this out of here, otherwise it will fall out. I just have to move this away from here and it should work now. So hopefully it will work now. I'm going to be looking at the comments in a moment. Okay, so let me move this here. What I might actually end up doing is bringing over Let me just keep doing this. I'm changing over to the Vitamix because it's still not doing what I want it to do. So I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to have to plug in the Vitamix. And that's why you need so many different kinds of equipment in the kitchen. So if anything doesn't work, you can just immediately I have to plug this in first. Let me just plug this in. So that if something is not working, you can just switch to something else. Make it really easy for yourself. And this is why I have so many different pieces of equipment in my kitchen. Now I'm just going to put this in here. And I prefer actually using the food processor for this. But since it doesn't wish to be used today, then I'm just going to go with what it wants to use. Now if you switch it to the, if you're using your... Vitamix or your your uh, your blend tech or your dash blender. No, you're gonna have to put more liquid in there. So that's the only thing. Whereas with the actual processor, you don't. So for that reason, I'm going to use the plunger. The plunger will really help me with this now. So I'm going to move this off so I could use the plunger and start the process. Mm. Now, I'm going to put this sea moss in there. I'm going to show you this first, what it looks like. Put this here. And then, ooh, actually, this looks a little like guacamole, doesn't it? But no, I am going to be making a quiche. And you will see the difference. And the reason why I didn't put the sea mosses in first, I wanted you to see the difference. Of between when I didn't put it in and when I put it in. Now, how much are you going to put in? Now, most people, if you're just starting out with sea moss, please do not put in more than one spoonful. And I'm talking about a teaspoon. I'm using, of course, the ceramic spoon, but about this size, do not put in more than one like this. But I'm so used to it. I'm going to put in three to four 
This is number three. See what it looks like when you start taking it out. It's a gel. And I'm putting in one more. Well, well, this is a giant piece, so not so much. I'm putting it four because I want it to look just like quiche, but I want mine to be strongly so. So let me close this up first. I want to close this first. Make sure when you keep your sea moss in that it really does close well. Never leave it out at all. Okay, so I've put the sea moss in there. I might have to use a little bit of the celery juice again, but you never know until you start it. So let's just put this in here. Start it and see. I'm going to put in there of this celery juice and you notice I have a spout that's why I've put it in here is so that it's easy now for me just to pour it in at the top here oh that might have been a wee too much but I can always put more of the other ingredients in after <laughs> the blender dance uh tom i know you like me to do it but i don't have time to do it i'm too busy doing this so you need to do it yourself see now if i want to make this smoother looking more like a quiche i just put some more of either the actual uh, um cashews in there or more of the sea moss so this is your quiche but we have to put it together we're not finished yet let me move these out of the way and now comes another fruit these are the red bell peppers why red when they're green do not eat them that's they're still very acidic when they're yellow it means they're ripening this is when they're really ripe and you should always eat fruits when they're totally ripe so what am i going to do with this i'm just going to cut it in two for the quiche but before I do that I'm going to scoop out I'm going to put the knife in here and I'm just going to scoop it out like this I hope you can see that put the knife I'm going to scoop it out like this let me take the information of the sea moss off so that you can all see what I'm doing much easier because I think the information from the sea moss might be in your way I don't yes there we go so let's look at some comments at the same time too uh, calf love, get your sea. Oh, it's advertising where to get a sea moss. So, let me just cut this first. I'm taking out the seeds on the inside and the see. I'm going to go in there now. It's really easy to take it out, isn't it? And just pull this out. See, and now all I need to do is to cut this this way and now i'm going to put this in here i'm going to take this off first and some seeds are still in here so let me take these out just take the seeds out if you notice there's still some seeds left i'm taking those out you plant these seeds you can plant red bell peppers all over the place so there it goes in here now pulling it in Okay, pushing. Judith, uh, Alan, you said interesting recipe. What do you think of it now? Okay, there we go. I'm going to flatten it and I'm going to use this to do so. I'm just going to flatten this like this. Make sure that all, it goes all the way to the end, the filling. And now, remember at the beginning, I did this and I said we we'll use that later. Well, this is later. So I'm going to take some carrot, the shredded carrot, put it on top. And now I'm going to cut up. I'm going to move actually 
let me move the equipment, the machines, over a little bit because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next with this. Now, will it taste like the sea? No, because I explain why. Because when I was soaking it, what I did was with the sea moss, with the sea moss gel, I put lemongrass in there, which I got directly from Thailand. And then I put also uh, a lot of lime and lemons. I squeezed them in and then I put them just by themselves. And I will be posting photos of those on my social media site. So I've got some dill and some parsley here. So I'm gonna put a piece of parsley in the center. I've got some dill which I'm going to just break up and just put a lot. I love dill. If you love dill like me, then you will like doing this. If you don't like dill, then you don't need to do it. And then I'm going to get some cilantro as well and just spread it there. Let's get the cilantro from here. This is why I didn't use up everything. I used up most of the cilantro, but I do have some still here, which I can use now. And there you have it, your quiche. We need, we need to make one more. So I'm going to use this one and cut it. Let's just cut this in two. But first, always take out the middle part. Now, if you want to keep this so you can use this for the quiche, you can just cut it in two like this and then re remove the center. And here's where you're going to have most of the seeds. Then just take the knife, go into the very edges of the seeds here. Then use your fingers to remove the center. It comes out pretty easily if you do it gently. You've got to do it gently, though. See? So you can still get it out like that as well. So let's put some more. So I'm going to fill this one. Just take out the sides first and take out the seeds because a lot of people when they're eating the quiche you know they're just going to bite into it from the outside so you don't want to have those seeds in there and then you're going to fill it like that now how much you're making is totally de dependent on you i like to serve these at functions and also when I know that I like to make them ahead of time because now when you put them in the fridge, they're not just will chill, but you know how the, the I showed you before how the sea moss had gelled? It will gel too, and it will look different then because it's been chilled in the fridge. So I'm going to, on the, the top here, I'm going to cut some of this scallions. Now, if I had chives, sometimes I use chives instead. Now, you notice I didn't put any pepper in there. That's because I noticed when I lived in France, they really don't use a lot of pepper at all. And since quiche is typically French, I'm making sure that I don't do that either. So put the carrots on top. I happen to like the carrots. Actually, sometimes I'm going to show you what I do with the carrots, another, another th thing that I do. So I put this here. So this one will not have the herbs. This one will have the scallion cut up really small. And this way you get the scalliony taste. Now, could you have put garlic in there? Absolutely. Yes, you could have. You could have put one garlic in there. But do you see what that looks like now? And if you put the garlic in there, then it will have a totally different taste, of course. So it's all up to you, but see, I'm going to take this garlic now and I'm going to just chop it up very finely. And if you want, you can just take it and on the sides of the bell pepper, you can take the garlic and I am just putting it on the sides of the bell pepper. And this will give it a very garlicky taste without a lot of garlic in there. So 
I'm just wiping it with the garlic, but you have to cut it first down the center. And this way, you will have the garlic flavor and smell. Make sure it's only raw garlic, of course. And then you can fill this one. Now I'm going to do a double filling with this. I'm going to do a double one. But beforehand, I'm going to actually put the carrots, the shredded carrots in there. I'm actually making this with the shredded carrots in there. So let me take this. Now it's quicker for me and easier to pour it out in here. Like this. So this is this really was not as complicated as a, doing a regular quiche is. But this is your raw vegan quiche. And yes, you might say to me, oh, please, it's green. Quiche is not green. Well, excuse me, we're raw vegan. We're in our greens. You just don't, then you'll, you, instead of putting, I'm going to show you a different one another time. Instead of putting the green herbs in there, you're going to put be putting things that will keep that beige color instead so that you people who come to you will not say, this cannot be quiche, it's green. So I'm going to put some of the parsley there and then put some more of the carrots on top. So now I'm going to show you exactly what we've made today. So this is the sea moss as it comes out of the sea all dried. And we have transformed it into the gel. And then we've mixed it into our meal here. Let me just put this here. And then I'm just going to put some of this on the side here. And voila, this is our quiche dish for the day, a raw vegan quiche, all ready to go. I trust you will try it and you will let me know what you thought of it. And you will also come back next week because next week we actually have an amazing, let me tell you about James. Sant. So James Sant went to the same raw living food school as I did, which is Living Light Culinary Arts Institute, but I didn't meet him there. And he then became an instructor. That's how ex excellent he was. And then he started running the school, but of course, everything closed down like, you know, everywhere else. And so now he has an online gourmet school teaching how to be a living food chef. So he'll be here for twice making holiday meals converting regular typical holiday meals that most people cook and overcook and he's going to be show you how to create them even more magnificently and make them raw vegan where your body will digest them you won't feel exhausted and tired afterwards and you will love it so james sant next week join me here again and the week after, as we look at how to convert traditional holiday menus into raw vegan menus. Thanks, everyone, to your health, because your health is your wealth. See you next week. Bye now. Mm -hmm.